Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and today on the show, I'm going to put together, with the parts available to me, what I would consider to be the ultimate Windows 98 gaming build. So I actually shot and filmed an entire video of me putting together a Windows 98 gaming build. I was actually rebuilding an old one that I initially put together, I don't know, 2010-ish. And I rebuilt it, tested it out, got it working, but then I, I ended up scrapping it because I, I thought I could do better, especially with some of what I know now and some of the resources that I have now. And one of the biggest problems it had was it was a Pentium 3 1000. Oh, you might not know this about me, but I've been a diehard Team Red since the Athlon 500. Good old Sega cartridge style. So I decided if I'm gonna do Windows 98 build, it's gonna be Team Red. Yeah, it's not like I need a full 1000. This one's a 500. I'm not gonna be using this one. I have an 800 to work with just to kinda, you know, value add. So we're gonna go with the 800. For the motherboard, an Asus K7M. And I am so glad that I have this. This is actually also my original Athlon motherboard that I got back in the day. This was my gaming build of the time. And this board, after exhaustive testing, works perfectly fine. And it has all the features that I could possibly need. We got the AGP, all the PCI you need. It has an ISA for that extra legacy support. Now this board was made at a very cusp time where it had full support for anything you wanted to do with it. On the disc, there's drivers for DOS, Windows NT, Windows 98, 95, and 2000. This particular computer probably would have been a Windows 2000 era build for me. And interestingly enough, the motherboards built on audio has Sound Blaster emulation baked onto it. All you have to do is flip a switch in BIOS and boom, you can run pure DOS on this thing and even though it's a PCI spec card, you're gonna get all your audio, no problems. So as mentioned, we're gonna go with an Athlon 800. For video, the fastest thing I have that was compatible with it is this Radeon 9000, which keeps in line with the Team Red theme. Unfortunately, there is something with the AGP slot that doesn't allow me to use any newer AGP cards than this. I actually have one uh, faster, 9550, but I can't use it with this board. But that's okay, because pretty much any game I would really want to run on this system will run great on the 5000, because it's many generations newer and faster than what was actually available for this board at the time. We're adding in a USB 2.0 card for a little bit of modern support. And talking about modern support, a promise, TX2 Plus SATA controller to uh, give us that uh, nice juicy SATA speeds or connectivity because I managed to get Windows installed on an SSD. That's an Intel 320 series 40 gigabyte. That's the first SSD I actually ever purchased. Now, this is a process that I actually did many years ago because the copy of Windows 98 that I'm using here is actually the one that I initially put together like 10 years back when I first did one of these 98 builds and, and then using an older program that I had called uh, Partition Magic to copy my Windows install over to SATA. Well, it translated over just fine and it was already ready on the SATA card. It was on a SATA drive, but now it's on an SSD and the results are amazing. Now I mentioned that this thing has built-in Sound Blaster support, but we're not going to be using it. For audio, the Sound Blaster AWE32 card is making a reappearance. And you might ask yourself, why? Wouldn't the sound card on here be better? I don't know. Maybe it has better DAs for wave processing, but the media on it sucks. This Sound Blaster, if you're running an older game like Duke Nukem 3D or something, or even Doom, the meaty presentation of this card is way better than the onboard. That's actually something interesting about different sound cards. They didn't all sound the same. Sure, the wave and system audio would be the same, but the meaty could be completely different based on what was on the card. Card. And this one's the best sounding one I have, so it's making it into this build to just fully round things out. Ooh, I almost choked there. Now, that really is the gist of it. Except you might ask, uh, how about the case? 
Once again, this tower case is making an appearance. I, I, I thought long and hard about exactly what case I wanted to use for this build, and I decided on this one for three reasons. Because one, that's one of my original gaming systems, and back then, as you can imagine, I had it built into one of these big, massive tower cases. So, we're gonna be revisiting that nostalgia. For two, let's face it, this Pentium Pro system that I built in here is fun, but I'm realistically never really going to use it again. Maybe I'll boot it up in another 10 years from now just to say, hey, does it still work? Woohoo! And for three, because I think it would be an interesting novelty to water cool this case. Wait, what's that? Water cool it? Uh, yeah. You might not know this yet, but I'm a water cooling enthusiast. Every computer on my fleet is water cooled. Custom loop, with the exception of one that I did a passive cooling experiment with, and uh, it, it stuck. I left it that way. So, how do you water cool an Athlon 800? Simple. I have this pupper right here. That's a thermal take, an old, ancient thermal take water block from roughly, I think, the Athlon XP era. And I'm going to figure out, well, I already figured out how to get it onto here using a combination of the original clip that you would use to mount the coolers to this card and the crossbar that would normally mount this to the processor it's intended for, except maybe, maybe oriented a little bit this way. I've already tested this. It goes together a bit weird, but once it's on there, it's on there, and I don't have to worry about it. We're gonna start off with some thermal grease. Uh, this is some random EK stuff that I seem to have. Oh yeah, generous application. We know we don't need much. Let's get that on there now. Now to do this, it was something to the effect of going like this. And yes, because these barbs are in the way, I can't unlock it and then lock it. It becomes a process of force fitting. And there you have it. It's not the most elegant solution, but I know it's not going anywhere. Like I said, I've thoroughly tested this install already. And it should still fit onto the board. Yep. Ha 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 ha, ha 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 Just, just, look at that. Just, just. I wonder if anyone else has attempted to water cool one of these. I wonder if they even made water blocks for these things. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's next level right there, kinda. Ha, <laughs> high IQ moves. Now, contrary to popular belief, or is it even popular belief, you don't need full coverage across the heat spreader. If you look at the stock heat sink, it pretty much only contacts the center of the CPU and the, the edges here are actually raised. So this is perfect. And like I said, I tested it. I have the matching radiator for that thing, for the water block that is. This was part of the kit. The pump's long dead, but <laughs> the rad and the water block are still relevant. And I've actually tested this on even modern Ryzen systems and it does work as a radiator, not the highest TDP. It was rated for about 65 watts, I think the kit was, so that's well within the tolerances of this old Athlon. This should have no problem cooling it down. It also saves me having to use one of my better radiators in the build. And then for the pump res combo, I got this, uh, this uh, Oddball XSPC unit here. This is actually a better pump res combo than you would expect. Low capacity, a bit finicky to work with and get primed properly. And while the pump sounds awful if you run it at full power, but I've modded it to run at five volts and this pump runs great at five volts, but still well enough circulation to do the job that I need it to do. So now I gotta go uh, uh, get, get, pull this beast apart and get this build going. Ah, well, here it is, all gutted down to its skibbies, and uh, yeah. I had to pre-fit the motherboard. This motherboard, this motherboard tray has a glitch where, you know, I have the back plane for it, but if I put it, it sits too low, and uh, stuff doesn't line up properly. I put uh, taller standoffs in there, but then it sits too high for the interface cards to slip in properly. So, well, I, I guess screw that then. Moving right along. Ah. Oh. History repeats itself. The processor binds up, sir. That's okay, this just pops out. And there we go. Pretty sure this 250 watt power supply should do the job just fine. It's not like we're loading this up with a whole heck of a lot of hardware and it survived the last build, now didn't it? Almost forgot to put in the RAM. Which, by the way, we're maxing out 
with 512 megs of PC133. Even though this processor only runs the uh, 100 megahertz front side bus, about the only drive that's staying in here is the floppy. All right, after a couple hours of deliberation and tinkering and figuring stuff out, this is what I've come up with. And yeah, it does look rather plain. It's hard to flash up such a simple build in such a old case, but hey, we made it work. Let's give you the tour. Engaging in some vintage cable management. Oh, the ribbon cables. Oh, foldy, it just kinda taped on there. Of course, that cubs up there. General lack of hardware in the bottom end kinda makes it rather clean. And I'm using tricks hailing from a day when you used to tuck wires behind the motherboard because there wasn't much of a motherboard tray even though this fan got lucky. Talking about fans, that one that used to be at the front was, it was useless. That carrier just pancaked it so close up to there, you didn't get any air movement. Fortunately, I had this old 120 mil Silverstone speed controlled right here and some magnetic fan mounts. These interesting things, I forget where I got them. We just kind of snap that on there now and that's going to give us a better fighting chance to actually get some fresh air into the front of this thing. Talking about the front, we got a mixed bag of black and white, black and white going on here, but it can't really be helped. Our hard drive, it gets mounted into this hot swap bay for convenience and future plans. XSPC Reservoir, oh, it'll be good there. And oh, just a little bit of splash of LED. That's actually an RGB strip hardwired to red. Just to add a little bit of zazz to the presentation. Any dirty secrets in the back? Not really, pretty clean. And our radiator hangs out up there, which is why this was so perfect. Because there's this, you know, 80 mil fan port right at the back and hey, Let's just put the radiator up there. Not a whole heck of a lot of hot air is gonna get pulled from that dimension. One of the last things left to do on this now is to just fill her up with water. And then we can button her up and get to testing. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this with the relevant secret combination of herbs and spices. No, this is not straight distilled water. A little something I cooked up so I could have a lot of coolant on the cheap. And I'm debating whether or not I wanna reveal this recipe. And talking about specialty tools, I have a foot switch control for my pump to help me prime things. It's gonna be real easy to prime this because that water block doesn't have typical chambers. It's just a little labyrinth that goes through. And of course that radiator is just a set of tubes. So this is gonna go rather quickly and easily. I'm not gonna to have to bleed this loop really. I think we've completed the loop already. I'm gonna put the cap on. We'll give her a little, a little twisty there. Is a bump? She is bumping. And the way this system is set up, it's extremely unlikely I'm going to experience any leaks. The radiator barbs are very extended and they stick on there in a way that's pretty secure. The bits power quarter inch fittings that I have on the reservoir itself, they, hell, they're tough to get off. They, they don't need clamps. The processor is the only thing that has undersized barbs that uh, actually are gonna need some clamping. So I, I have them on there. I'm pretty confident that this is gonna stay just the way it is. So let's go get it set up on the test bench. And here it is, all hooked up and sexy looking, at least for a 90s build, even though this is early 2000s hardware. I turned down the studio lights and hoped that you could see the hint of red coming out of the reservoir, but it's not particularly bright. And then of course, everything seems to work. Now let's get this back into a reasonable position. Now I'd like to show you just what kind of tomfoolery we're dealing with here. Let's take a not as old game, Need for Speed. Look at that. Enter, escape, escape, go. And bam! That's uh, faster than a Nintendo Three, even. Two. One, go! Now 
I forgot to mention, I actually have a, a joystick for this with the drivers installed. And it would make this much easier, but this is about the only game I need the joystick for, and I just pretty much forgot to plug it in. Pretty sure if I pay attention, I'll be able to win at the game. Just dam it back up, kick back. Ah, oh, it's a one-hander. Competition is another car just like me. Go on. And I got it. First place. According to this, I'm going 365 kilometers an hour. I find that hard to believe. Oh boy. Here's the last guy. Oh, oh. Ah, I almost hit him. I just lapped the last guy. Lap record, final lap. Oh. Oh, double. That's guy in second last place. Oh boy. I'm dodging him and I screwed up. I'm digging these groovy tunes. Too bad I'm gonna get a copyright strike. Oh, third last place guy? <laughs> I almost beat the third last place guy to the finish line. Oh, we're gonna wipe out anyway. Congratulations. Sure. You Congratulations. Congratulations. You see how fast that loaded up? That's the kind of party we're dealing with here. So, a couple games of this era that I used to really like to play. Oh, here's one of them. Classic. This was such a great game, and the graphics were mind-blowing for the time, because it was one of the first that took and put uh, actual photographic textures over the 3D models. Now, the fact that we're waiting for discs is about the only thing that slows us down. Let's try this. Ho oh, ho 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 ho. Oh, what options do we have here? Everything's cranked, except for the resolution. Gotta keep it reasonable. That 9000 can only handle so much. Oh yeah. And again, look how fast it's loading. Used to take forever. Listen, someone's broken into my house. Call 911. Is this the pain residence? Yes, someone's broken into my house. They're still here. You have to. Good. Comic book type cutscenes. Hello. No. Michelle! No. No. Michelle! Oh, Please, NYPD, drop He's it. coming! Let it die! I'm not oh. fucking oh. No, 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 please, God, no. The flesh of fallen angels! Esther, let's go! Oh, it's so dark. No, no, no. We need no, to get past no, this no, tacky please, section. Michelle. Oh, baby. No! <laughs> that was
was three years ago. Everything ripped apart in a New York minute. The killer junkies had been high on a previously unknown designer drug, Valkyr, V. After the funeral, I told Alex I'd be transferring to the DEA. I went undercover, infiltrated the worst mafia family in New York. Aha! And the first level. Oh, this isn't going as fast as I would expect it to go. The SSD is only as fast as what it takes to process it. My Beretta stirred nervously under my coat, but the train doors had already shut behind me, and I was in for the ride. Next stop, Roscoe Street Station, and Alex. Huh. An actual rendered cutscene. The station was drenched in gloom. Alex was a ghost, nowhere to be seen. I'd have to look for him. Uh oh. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street. I'd have to find Alex fast. Oh yeah. You look everywhere for everything. The pills would hold the pain back for a while. Yeah! I just got a Desert Eagle. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh. Oh. These guys are carrying all Desert Eagles. Well, heck. Yo, guys. Hey, we get it around. You hear me? Hey, what the? Wait, Desert Eagle has 12 rounds? I don't think they know how a Desert Eagle works. The security panel let out a mocking cackle. I'd need the right code. Yo! Uh, I didn't do very well that time. Someone was coming at me with a shotgun. How do I use my health again? I need to uh, be more careful. I feel like I'm not getting my full FPS While looking here. for Alex, I had ended up in the middle of a big time crime operation. Hitting Roscoe Bank ain't exactly keeping low profile. What the hell? Ah! The gate was locked. I would have to find another way to get to the tunnel. I'm getting my ass handed to me. I've used up all my painkillers. Kiss it goodbye, no, hell. Who the hell? Ah! That was point blank. You saved me, man. What's going on here? A massacre. These armed thugs just appeared from nowhere. We need to get help. I can make the call from the control room one floor up. Can you take me there? Sure. Sounds good. Follow me. Okay, I have no health left and... There's no time to lose. We gotta get to the control room. Home free. This way. Hey! Look out! Ah. Where you go? Ah, uh, well, that was anticlimactic. Ooh, my frame rates are dropping. Uh oh. Okay, well, uh, not enough frames. Oh, okay. Did they literally start me off, right, Reggae, off the train? Oh well, I'm over this. Clearly the 9,000 couldn't quite uh, push this game to its fullest potential. After a little bit of gameplay, let's see. Oh, oh, warmth, but barely, barely anything. Let's uh, give her a quick thermal probing. 33 degrees on the processor, 38, cold. How about this radiator? 30 degrees. The thing that I'm worried about is the chipset. Ooh, 58 degrees. 
That's the only bad thing about water cooling. There's no air passing across that chipset anymore. It's almost I want to reposition. Is this intake fan actually working? Yeah, I guess it is. It'd almost be nice to put something on that chipset. What do we have here? Disc one, disc two. All right. Install. Oh, I remember that was a thing. Low memory, 64 megs of RAM with more than 60. Well, yeah, okay. Friggin' EA. Ah, yes, it's asking for disc two. Just can't get away from a CD-ROM. Setup needs the next disc. Hmm, 71% was on disc one. Certainly doesn't take as long as it used to back in the day. Let's try it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do ourselves a shutdown here because there's one more value added bonus feature that I set up here because you see, because I am using these, um, hot swap bays, well, we could just flop out the boot drive like good old cartridges. And then what ends up happening over here on the screen? What's that? Is that pure DOS? Yes, indeed, sir. Because we have the good old AWE32 installed on here, we got ourselves some pure DOS. Pure DOS. <laughs> Pentium processor, highly recommended. I, 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 I think we're gonna be okay. I don't think my screen capture is gonna be okay though. Oh no. This looks like hell. Oh, okay. We can up the ante here. Or can we? Uh, nah, it does not look like it likes it. Uh, let's try, uh... Oh... Get out of there. That was nasty. I didn't like Quake anyway. Unfortunately, I can't screen cap DOS worth a damn. And oh, wow, look at that stripey action on there. Oh, but there you go. Pure DOS works. Pure DOS works great. It looks like heck. I don't know why I would want to play this. Not when I can use the Doom 95 engine in Windows 98. Oh yeah, I should show you that. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing DOS can do that Windows 98 can't do better. So, there it is. 640 by 480 full screen. Just give her butt. You know, I think the only thing Pure DOS might do better is the MIDI. Doom with a mouse really is a trip. Well, that's about it. That's about all I have to show you with this ultimate Windows 98 build. Semi-ultimate, 
Maybe if I had a slightly faster video card so I could really push those games. However, ironically so, those are Windows games, and what runs well under Windows 98 in Windows mode would also run under, say, uh, Windows XP with some proper better acceleration for some proper better fun times. So if you stay tuned, I have some other interesting stuff to show you coming up. You might just like it if you like this. And done.